Hey, good morning, Freedom. How you doing this morning? All right, that right. sounds good. All right, let's all stand up. Wait. Just want to try something a little different here this morning. I want you all just to close your eyes this morning and just uh, get all those thoughts of everything that's going on out there in the world out of your minds and bring ourselves to worship this morning and with clear heads. But, um, and just think about what God has in mind for you, the plans he has for you. And just really let that soak in this morning and just with these words, let's, let's just praise our Lord and just thank him for what he's doing. And he's going to continue to do in all of our lives, right? Thank you, Jesus.
praise God. Let those chains fall, right?
come between us right don't let the words of the enemy become come between us and our friends and our family right don't listen to what the devil says Bueno, va. 
honest rise I lift my, lift my tears When there's hope in this heart I will praise you, Lord The joy of the Lord is my strength The joy of the Lord is my strength In the darkness I dance The shadows I see The joy
I just thank you for this morning, just for your presence here, Lord, and your power, Lord. I just pray that this morning that, Lord, we all take in what you have for us this morning through these songs, through Jimmy's message, Lord. I just pray that everyone has ears to hear, eyes to see, and an open heart, Lord. I just thank you for everyone that's here, Lord, and the love you show us, Lord, even when we don't deserve it, when we screw up, Lord. I just thank you for being there for us regardless. Just help us all to do what you want, Lord, and not what we want. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Buckle up and hold on. At our church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe in God's radical, unconditional, and unwavering love for us. God. We also affirm that you may or may not believe that Jesus is God. And we're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. For years, churches have placed a high priority on Jesus as the get-out-of-hell-free card. At our church, we place the highest priority on Jesus as a live-life-to-the-fullest invitation. At our church, we believe every person has a dream deep inside their hearts, and that God put that dream there, not for our glory, but for His. At our church, we're not concerned with where you've been, but where you're going. At our church, we believe that the Bible is God's Word. It is real. It is living. It is active. We believe that people who don't go to church anywhere are not the enemy. They are real people who need the perfect love that only God can give. And we believe that God gives this love through, of all people, us. At our church, we do not and we will not display a holier-than-thou attitude toward anyone. We are all broken people but he is putting us back together. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on a cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot, and we will not candy coat or water down that message, ever. Today, you've chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially dangerous message. Welcome to our church. Welcome to our church, yeah. Welcome to Freedom Biker Church, York, PA. My name is Jim Close, and I'm the preacher, and I am free, free no doubt. Um, hey, hi to all you guys out on Facebook. Hi to the executive suite out there, yeah. 
Some people like to call you the peanut gallery. I prefer to call you the executive suite. All right. Yeah, pray with me. Lord Jesus, uh, thank you uh, for another great day, Lord. Thank you for this uh, country we live in, man. Thank you for our freedom, Lord. Thank you for the freedom that our forefathers and all of our men and women in the service have fought for and sacrificed for. Thank you for the ultimate freedom that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for, Lord. And uh, Lord, we just, we're just so grateful. Uh, Lord, I just pray that your spirit would just speak through me today, Lord, that my words would be your words. And as I speak your words, that they would be received, Lord. And as they're being received, that lives would be transformed, Lord, that you would, that you would transform them into what you have created them to be. Lord, sons and daughters of the Most High King, Lord. And uh, Lord, I'll just uh, be careful. Uh, we'll just be careful in everything that we say and everything that we do to give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said, no doubt. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, and in honor of uh, Independence Day, uh, we're going to play something special here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have our national anthem sung by the combined choirs of the United States Naval Academy, the United States Air Force Academy, the United States Military Academy at West Point, the United States Coast Guard Academy, and accompanied by the United States Army Herald Trumpets. So uh, I hope you guys don't mind us honoring our country here on this uh, weekend after Independence Day. I was looking for a really good um, uh, national anthem to play, and uh, the reason I chose that one is because it had all of our military academies singing it, right? And as I watched it, it was uh, really cool because... You know, there's been a lot of controversy with the NFL, and you know we had 
presidents from both sides in there. And, but it was really amazing to look back at a time when the national anthem played and everybody respected it and everybody honored it. And we were together as a country. Amen. That's what America's all about. <laughs> Jeff Rosh. <laughs> Who? Check. Okay. Affectionately um, known as U Turn. There you go. <clears throat> Last week we had a uh, bike and car show, and uh, after it ended, we all got, I mean, the help was greatly appreciated. I want to let everybody know that whoever helped that day and beyond, before that, you know, getting everything together, parking the cars and bikes, we had 49 entries right. for our first bike show. <laughs> We passed around a bucket for LJ Larry. Um, we actually raised $150 for him that day, just passing around a bucket. All right. We will be presenting that to LJ. But right now, I'd like to present you, Jim, with $1,222 we took in. Once again, guys, thank you all. All right, man. Awesome job. Twelve hundred and twenty-two dollars. Could somebody come up and get that for me, please? Take, take it, take it. You don't want to let the pastor hold on to the money. Okay, here. Okay. Thank you, Jane. All right. <laughs> hey, I just want to say thanks to everybody again for uh, Jeff and just everybody. It was so many people that helped out. It's just uh, I couldn't remember everybody, but uh, it was awesome, man. I mean, it was the first one and well attended Sunday afternoon, so it's a tough time, but uh, it was a great time, um, and everybody was uh, had a good time. Steve, did you want to? You can come up. All right, the Indian. Um, I think that one's on. That one? This one. I should have came up the other way. Well, yeah. Testing. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, Freedom Biker Church. This is a little service, as you can tell. Uh, I was out shopping this week. I, I do want to thank you all for my wife's, for the prayers you gave to my wife. She was in an accident two Sundays ago on her bike, and her shoulder is slowly healing, three breaks, and her road rash is starting to scab up, and everything's looking a little better. But like I said, I was out shopping, and I purchased like 40-some dollars worth of T-shirts. And I came across this shirt. There was only one left. And it was screaming out, buy me for the church. So I don't know if you can see this, Jim, if you want to take the one side. It has the American flag on it, and it has veteran. Yes. Fantastic, right? And I thought, the first thing I thought of was, I can't wear that because I'm not a veteran. I wish I was. But I, I don't feel right wearing it, so I have it here. And I'd like to have all the veterans please stand if we could. What I'm going to do is something different here. How many do we have? Stay standing, please. Come on. Stay up. Stay up. I got to look how many we have. I have a number in my head, and I'm going to give this shirt away to because I respect you guys for what you did. You gave us our freedom. We couldn't ride the church on our bikes without what you guys did for us and all veterans, alive or deceased. I want to take this time to honor you. My wife said, do it, 
do it white, and I'm trying to do it as much as I can. I used to be a stutterer, and I overcame that. <laughs> I guess I did. Anyway, long story short, we'd like to give this to one of you. I wish I had ten, but I only had one. So we're going to go down through starting with this side. I am picked the number in my head. I'm, I should have wrote it down. Between what and what? Huh? Between what and what? One and ten. Okay. Somebody's going to get it, I know for sure. You want to If it's the wrong, if it's the wrong size, then okay. No, well, somebody will get to it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. It I don't is, know. Uh, all they have is extra large. It's only one shirt. So put it on, wet, stretch it, and ride down the road. I mean, it really is an awesome, <laughs> awesome shirt. I've done that already. But anyway, okay, we're gonna start over here. What is your Yell number? Yell out a number. What is your number? One. Keep going. Three. You won. Three. Number three. Let Come on see. up. Terry. Terry is the lucky Terry. winner. All right. Thank you, Steve. All right. Much appreciated. Okay. Uh, also today at St. Stephen's UCC, uh, over in West York, there is a patriotic day. It starts at 3 o'clock. They're going to have music and ice cream. So if you have any questions, ask Rick. He's got his hands up back there. If you have any questions about it, go see him. All right. Um, all right, this time we're going to take our offering. Um, as I say every week, there is no cover charge at Freedom Biker Church. Uh, but if you like what we do here and you want to support the ministry, um, this is your opportunity to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention now to the microphone behind home plate. And please welcome one of America's premier entertainers, Grammy Award winner, Lee Greenwood. And I had to start again Just my children and my wife Thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas From sea to shining sea From Detroit down to Houston And New York to L.A. Well, there's pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say I'm proud to be an American Who at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died Who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA To be an American Where 
God bless the USA. No doubt, man. So I hope you all had a great Independence Day. Yeah. Um, Pastor John from uh, uh, Freedom Biker Church of Delaware pointed out that um, it doesn't really capture everything just to call it the 4th of July, right? Sort of like Christmas when we call it, you know, we, we say Christmas and we don't include Christ, right? When we say the 4th of July and we don't include what we are celebrating, it takes a little bit away from the holiday, right? Because on that day, we're celebrating patriots in this country who decided they had had enough of tears and bondage and just not being able to be free and they wanted freedom man so why they made a declaration now what's interesting is they actually um seceded from england two days earlier on july 2nd but they actually uh finished and signed the declaration of independence on july 4th and um it says here, uh, let me just read this. Independence Day is a federal holiday in the United States commemorating the Declaration of Independence of the United States on July 4th, 1776. The Continental Congress declared that the 13 American colonies were no longer subject and subordinate to the monarch of Britain and were now united, free, and independent states. And from that day forward, from that day forward, patriots, men and women, served this country to ensure that from that day to this very moment, we are free. No doubt? Where did they get such a great idea? Where did this great idea of freedom come from? What gave them the thought, the nerve, to decide that we should be free? We shouldn't, we shouldn't be subordinate to a tyrannical government. We shouldn't have a government body or anybody else telling us how we should live our lives. Where'd they get such a crazy idea? Listen carefully to these words concerning freedom. Can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have removed their only firm basis, a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are a gift from God? I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just that justice cannot sleep forever. Let me just pause for a moment. Trembles for his country when he knows that God is just. There, we should all have a little bit of fear and trembling when we think about the holy God and that he's just. I know, I know in my heart that I'm not worthy. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are empowered by their creator with inherent and inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, 
and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights, governments are in, instituted among men. That is the job of the government, folks, is to make sure we have our rights. That's it. The job of the government is not to feed us. The, go the job of the government is not to tell us how to live our lives, how to raise our children, what to do in church, and when to speak about God, ever. The job of the government is to ensure we have those rights. Almighty God has created the mind free. All attempts to influence it by temporal punishment or burdens are a departure from the plan of the holy author of our religion, God. No man shall be compelled to frequent or support any religious worship, place, or ministry or otherwise suffer on account of his religious opinions or beliefs. In other words, no government is to force us into a religion and no government is to force us from proclaiming our religion. All men shall be free to profess and by argument to maintain their opinions in matters of religion. The person who wrote this was Thomas Jefferson. Interestingly enough, Thomas Jefferson is often misquoted as the person that says we need to separate all religion from all state. Doesn't sound like that's what he said here to me. What he says is the government shouldn't impose religion on you and the government shouldn't keep you from talking about, arguing about, or expressing your beliefs. What, regardless of what's been written, regardless of what's taught, regardless of the rhetoric that you hear, we are the only nation on earth that was built on the Christian faith. We're the only nation in the world whose Constitution, Bill of Rights, and all the early documents of our forefathers were written with God in mind. That is the truth. And if you read or study it at all, that truth is indisputable. President George Washington said, it would be impossible to govern rightly without God and the Bible. President John Adams said, I'm sorry, yeah, um, the, I'm sorry, the Pilgrim Charter of 1620 states that his purpose was to advance the enlargement of the Christian religion to the glory of God Almighty. Before our pilgrims arrived on the shores, they gathered below the deck of the Mayflower and signed the Mayflower Compact which revealed their intent for the glory of God. In 1632, when Maryland was chartered as a colony, we now know as the communist state of Maryland, but then, when Maryland was chartered, chartered as a colony, they wrote, we are motivated with the pious zeal for extending the Christian religion. Andrew Jackson, the seventh president, said, the Bible is the rock upon which our republic rests. The last sentence of the Declaration of Independence says, for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance upon the protection of the divine providence, God, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and here's something you don't hear a lot about anymore, our sacred honor. 
our sacred honor. Honor is not something that you can buy. It's not something you can talk yourself into. Honor is a God-given gift, and we have to receive God. We have to follow Jesus in order to be truly honorable. As Paul said, there's nothing good within us. A few weeks back, I was talking about uh, courage. And I had mentioned I um, had met a guy and talked to him, and he was talking about uh, this pastor named Michael Anthony that wrote a book called A Call for Courage, Living with Power, Truth, and, lo- and Love in an Age of Intolerance and Fear. The reason we live with so much fear is because we very much as a culture have moved away from God. That's where the fear comes from. See, so when you had, um, back in 1776, when the, these group of uh, patriots got together and decided we were going to secede from Britain and that uh, we were going to declare our independence, they knew what was going to follow. They knew that there was going to be war. They knew that Britain wasn't just going to say, okay, guys, go ahead, do your thing. They knew that there was going to be bloodshed. There, they knew that there was good, it was going to be a struggle. They knew that they were the, the men that were willing to take up arms and fight were very much in the minority. It was, if you looked at it on paper, a nearly impossible task to undertake. But what they also knew was they were children of God. They were men of God, and they were doing this godly reasons. They wanted freedom, and they were willing to risk everything to get that. So just like moving away from God brings us to fear, moving closer to God gives us courage. Moving closer to God gives us a reason, gives us a cause to fight for our freedom. And don't be mistaken, man, we're in a fight for our freedom. Slowly and surely, there there are people who are trying to chip away from the truth. We're trying to chip away at the values that this great country was based on or trying to push us away from God. We can't have that. We live in a time of uh, great division. Here's a uh, quote from the book from a guy named uh, Eli uh, Weasel, I think. That's funny. I just read that. (laughs) But he says something great. Might be a weasel, but he says something great. He says, we must always take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor. Right? Evil prevails when good men do nothing. Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. When it comes to Christianity, Jesus puts it this way. This is from Revelations 3, 14 to 16. It says, To the angel of the church in Laodicea, write. So this is Jesus saying to John, write this to this church. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the roar of God's creation. In other words, these are Jesus' words. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. 
So here's Jesus saying, man, you're just lukewarm. Man, I wish you were either evil or good. Just take a stand. But since you won't do that, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. In fact, one of the translations says, vomit you from my mouth. In other words, forcibly expel you in disgust. Think about that. Not for being evil, but, and not for being good, but for not even taking a stand. Right? Because when we don't take a stand, when we don't speak up, when we don't have the courage to say what needs to be said, evil prevails. Do you see that? I see it. I see it happening. And his um, blinders, how blinders limit a uh, horse's view, right? And it's an interesting analogy because um, like when, they're, when, when you've, I don't know a lot about horses, but I assume he does. And he says, so when you when you put uh, blinders on the horse initially, they resist, right? Because they want to see everything. They want to they be free to see everything around them. So they resist these blinders, right? And then as time goes on and they're forced to wear these blinders, there's an acceptance that comes with the horse. And the horse gets used to only seeing what his master wants him to see, only going in the direction that his master wants him to go, right? Um, and, and eventually the horse actually embraces the blinders. Sound familiar? Sounds like a lot what's going on now, right? Slowly and surely we're, the blinders are getting put on because why should we care? Why should we be concerned about what somebody does with their own life? Why should we even be care, care if somebody wants to cram their beliefs down our throat? I think it's very ironic in our culture that Christians have often been accused of trying to cram our beliefs down other people's throats. You know, we're often accused that the word Jesus in a government building that somehow we're forcing everybody in that building into a white van. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. If somebody has the right to stand in Congress and declare their devotion to Allah, I have the right to stand and speak the name of Jesus. We live in a culture where many of our basic values and truths are being redefined. Man, word art is such a big thing, right? I mean, we take something really horrible and we give it a different phrase and all of a sudden it becomes more acceptable. It's, 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 you know, it's, and you know why it's happening? Because this is how it started. Well, you can't say that. That offends people. Right? So now we can't, we can't speak our minds anymore. Right? I'm fat. Not plump. Not fluffy. Look, man, when I was a kid, I was so fat. And my parents didn't say, you know, Jim, you could, you could stand a little. My mom said, you're fat. And you know, and, but you know what it caused me to do? When I got old enough that I cared, it caused me to lose weight. It caused me to better myself. Because somebody, as cruel as it may sound, spoke the truth to me. She didn't go, oh, you know, she, my mom loved me, regardless of how fat I was, right? <laughs> but she didn't go, well, it's okay, honey, you're, you're beautiful on the inside. No, man. Mom, why can't I get a date? Because you're fat. (laughs) 
<laughs> we have been taught not to speak the truth because it might offend somebody. That, that foolishness has to stop. And, and not just because it's uncomfortable, but because literally our freedom depends on it. If we remain silent, then we're going to wind up having to do what our forefathers did back in 1776. We're going to have to fight. We're either going to have to submit or we're going to have to fight for our freedom. In the Bible, in the day, the day, uh, after the day of Pentecost, when the apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit, here it is, the same Holy Spirit that was in them is in us. That same Holy Spirit they were filled with is in us. Peter and John uh, had a run-in with the local authorities because they were preaching. And look, the reason people don't like to hear the word Jesus in government, especially or in any form of authority, is because Jesus is the most powerful name there is. Love him, hate him, you don't ignore him. When somebody gets up, and it's okay if you get up and say, I'm praying to God. But believe me, man, I've been at motorcycle uh, events where they asked me to pray. And when I prayed in the name of Jesus, I heard comments about it. You could say God. But Jesus is who God sent to save us. Jesus is the name above all names. Jesus, that name has power, right? And Peter and John were proclaiming the name of Jesus, and guess what? The authorities did not like it because it was getting people stirred up. Because just like our forefathers, when you start to hear about Jesus, when you start to have a relationship with Jesus, guess what? I can be free. And those who want to oppress us, those that want us to submit to them, to be free. And it was the same then as it is now. So Peter and Paul were speaking the, uh, I'm sorry, Peter and John. <laughs> Peter and John have a run in with the authorities and they say, uh, when they saw, so these are the authorities, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could not see the man who had, but since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered him to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. So the authorities told them, go, go away, let us talk. And they, they talked about this. And um, they said, what are we going to do with these men? Everyone living in Jer Jerusalem knows that they performed a notable sign, and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading, that, er, watch their strategy. Old is new, new is old, man. But to stop this thing from spreading any farther... Among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in his name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Imagine that, right? The truth, so here's uh, Peter and John, and in the name, in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, they healed a man. God used that sign to show everybody around them that they were preaching and what they were preaching was the truth. So when they healed this man in Jesus' name, it was undeniable. So the authorities say, well, what are we going to do with these guys? How are we going to stop them from speaking this name, Jesus, the name that will set you free? How are we going to keep them from doing that? Well, we'll just tell them to stop, right? Because we can't deny what has happened here. 
right? We're, we can tell the people it ain't real, but they can see, right? People can see. We can, just like we can speak the truth, people can see the truth, right? When you speak the truth, it, think about it, man. When, when I get into a discussion with somebody and I start speaking truth to them, you know what they do? They call me names. They say I hate people. They tell me that, that, that I'm uh, this aphobic or that aphobic, right? I'm racist. Whatever they can do, don't you care about whatever they can do to keep me from speaking the truth. The truth is undeniable, so instead of offering facts and logic, they decided to just try to silence them. Does that sound familiar? But what is right in God's eyes, what is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. Peter and John reply with the truth and the authority of God Almighty. In Acts 4, 13 through 22, it says, As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Don't believe what I say. Read the Bible and then open your ears and open your eyes. I know the truth. You can know the truth too. And as the Word says, the truth will set you free. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. So let me just say this about freedom and about speaking God's word and about spreading the gospel, the love of God among people. Um, people will not be able to deny it. People will question you. People will attack you. People will call you names. But in the end, the truth is the truth always. So just like Peter and John, the truth is there for everybody to see. Speak the truth and let them be the judges. That's what they say, right? Who are we, who are we going to follow? God or are we going to follow? You be the judge. Look at what is here. Look at the truth and you be the judge. Here are some things the Bible says has to say about um, freedom. John eight thirty one to thirty two says, "If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. know the truth, and the truth will set you free." I never get tired of saying that. The truth will set you, but you have to let the truth set you free. You have to live by the truth. You can't say, "Yeah, I believe the truth," and then go do something else. John 8, 34 through 36 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. If, you're, if you practice sin, you'll be a slave to sin. Jesus says, Jesus died on the cross Jesus says, I'm here to set the captives free. But you have to walk out of the, your cell, man. If you keep walking back into your cell, you're never going to be free. As the Apostle Paul explained to some of the first Christians in 1 Corinthians 6.12, so when we... When we when we become free, when we practice being free, when Jesus frees us, when Jesus died on the cross so we could be reconciled with God, so all our sins could be forgiven, he didn't do so so we could just go and live the way we want to live. He didn't do so so that we could continue to live in sin. He did so to, free, to, to truly set us free because there is no freedom in all that. You're walking back into the cell. Right? So yes, Jesus died to, for forgiveness of our sins, past, present, and future. 
but he also died to set us free so that we could live the life that God created us to live, to be the people that God created us to be, to use the gifts that God gave us to use, not to just go and do whatever we feel like doing and say, okay, I'm good, my ticket's punched. Right? So Paul explained it this way in 1 Corinthians 6.12. He says, all things are lawful to me. In other words, I could do anything I want. But not all things are helpful. Man, hear that. Right? Because that's at the crux of what salvation is really all about. Right? Yes. Jesus says, yes, I died on the cross. So you won't be held accountable for anything unlawful or sinful that you've done, but just because you're not going to be held accountable doesn't mean it's going to be helpful to you or anybody else, right? All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. So look, man, this is what freedom's really all about. God says, I give you choice. I'm going to let you do what you choose to do, right? Sin is not like that. When we, when we live in sin, we live in bondage. When we live in sin, we have no choice at that matter, at that point in time. We only find freedom through Jesus Christ. Sin is not freedom. There's no freedom at the bottom of a bottle. There's no freedom in a needle. There's no freedom in the porn that you watch online. There's no freedom in doing the opposite of what God has called us to do. Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Because Jesus loves you. He wants to see you live an abundant life. But you've got to Follow Him. Amen? Galatians 5. So you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Be free, man. Don't use your freedom as an excuse to mess your life all up. Don't use your freedom as an excuse to sin. Use your freedom to build the kingdom of God. Use your freedom to help one another. Use your freedom to love one another. Use your freedom to ensure that we stay free. No doubt. So God, God so loved the world that he gave his son. Jesus is a truth. And through that truth, it's the only way that we're truly set free. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, man, I would encourage you, take this day, take this opportunity to accept Jesus. Man, we're going to do a baptism out here, man. We, yes, you, who, who is right? We baptize, man. It's a great symbol of how we, we, we get lowered into the water and we're cleansed and we come up a new creation, right? We come up a new person. Man, be free. If you don't know Jesus, accept Jesus today and be set free. Pray with me. <laughs> Thanks, Em. Uh, Lord, we just, uh, we just love you. We just thank you. Thank you for our freedom. And thank you for touching the hearts of a group of patriots so many years ago and just encouraging them and just well up with them this desire to be free. Thank you for leading them to create this country 
this great country that we live in. Thank you for the opportunity and the privilege of being able to live here. Thank you for all those throughout all of our great history that have fought and sacrificed and even died so that we can be free, gather together freely. And Lord, um, I just pray as we go out of here that we would just share that love. Lord, that we would just share the love that sets the captives free, Lord. And Lord, um, we'll be careful in everything that we say and everything that we do to give you all the praise and all the glory in the name above all names, the name that sets us free, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the church said, no doubt. Praise God. Thanks for the truth, right?
Praise God. Have a great week.